Hi, I'm Matt. Welcome to this second video on Hubble and the expansion of the universe. So we're going to pick up where we left off last time. So the first thing we're going to do is click on this website, this little link here. And it's going to take us to the Los Comres Observatory website. So the Las Comres Observatory website has a lot of different educational resources on it. And the one we're at now is measuring the age of the universe. To find this resource, if you go to their homepage, which is lco.global, and you click on For Everyone, Education, Resources, and then finally, Activities. So once we're here, we can see that we can scroll down, and there's the Measuring the Age of the Universe activity. So once we're in this activity, we can um, see there's a bit of a summary here. The discovery of the expanding universe was one of the greatest revelations in astronomy. During this activity, students will relive Hubble's monumental discovery by using real supernova spectra to create a famous Hubble diagram. So I highly recommend you read through all this information um, before you do the activity or as you do it. Um, it's got lots of good steps there. It will be very difficult if you, if you don't read through that information to sort of get your head around what's happening. You can also download this information in the materials list. So it says obviously you need a computer with an internet connection. You need to download this Excel spreadsheet. And then there's also this information that you can see on the internet here. You can also download that as a PDF so you can read it if you wish. Um, so I'm going to download this Excel spreadsheet, and that's now downloaded. And I can scroll down, and this is the background, which is sort of what I went through in my previous video. But what I'm going to look at now is we need to find um, some spectra. So we can go to this um, website here, and we're going to look at the spectra of a few different types of supernova. Um, sorry, of a particular type, and that type is type 1A. So if we go object type, we want type 1A supernova. We're going to scroll down here. Supernova events, type 1A. And then we also want to select which instrument around the world collected this data. So we're going to scroll down until we get to, oops, not there yet. FTS, so that's the Forks Telescope South, so that's the one located in Coonabarabran, with this spectroscope on it. So once we do that, we can click, oh sorry, as we scroll down, we want to uncheck this box, which is, says show aggregated plots, but check this box here, which says show spectra plots. And once we click submit, the website's going to load and it's going to bring us up some data. And so you can see that what we've done is we've now accessing some real actual spectra plots. And that's just going to load up there right now. So that's the spectra plot for a supernova event going from approximately 400, sorry, 4,000 angstroms to about 9,500. Or you can think of it as 400 nanometers to about 950 nanometers. Um, the supernova event had a name and it was supernova event. Um, 2019 VSA. And so we're going to have a look at the different things we need. So we're going to go back and open up this Excel file. We want to enable editing. I'm just going to double click on that cell to resize it. Put our name in, Matt. Um, and so you can see that this table needs some filling in. So at the bottom here, you've got this worksheet. Now, this is the worksheet if you wanted to do your own calculations with a calculator to, you know, to find uh, the distance using the distance modulus. However, I'm going to go down to the bottom here and click, click calculations. And on this sheet, it's actually got, if I click on this cell here, um, such as radial velocity, it's got a formula in there. So the only things I need to put in here is obviously supernova name, instrument, and that will, oh, sorry, and the redshift, once I put the redshift in, that'll then calculate the radial velocity. Um, in addition to that, once I put the apparent magnitude in, it'll then use the distance modulus already to calculate the distance to the object, um, both in parsecs and then in megaparsecs. 
So first of all, I'm going to put my name once again in this sheet, Matt, and I'm going to work between this Excel file and the um, web browser we were just in. So if we go back here, you can see it's Supernova Event 2019 VSA. I'm going to copy that name and put that in my diagram here, sorry, my Excel file. And so you can see that I've now put Supernova Event 2019 VSA, the instrument. Now, if I just minimize this, here's the instrument. It was the Fawkes Telescope South, the spectroscope on that. And that'll be the same for all of our events we're using. And so I can just grab that cell and just paste that all down there. So for this supernova, I'm actually going to look up its redshift value. So I can actually split screen these two things so I can work side by side, which is quite handy. And so I'm just going to move my head down there. So its redshift value is here. So I'm going to copy that, control C and paste that there. And now it's calculated the radial velocity. So it's 1830 kilometers per second. The next thing I need to find is the uh, apparent magnitude. Now it actually doesn't appear here. So what I need to do is go back to the supernova name, copy that, go back to the instructions, and there's also a link down here to find the magnitude. And we need to use a different website. So I'm going to open this in a new tab. I'm going to go back up the top and open our spectra plots in a new tab. Switch them around. So on this website here, what we need to do is put in the search bar the supernova we just copied, and I'll just double check that we have it here. Copying that, and I've pasted it and I've searched it. And so this was a supernova event from 2019 on the 28th of November. And so I can actually, if I maximize this page, I can see that the supernova event that's when it occurred, that's the host galaxy, but I also have my maximum apparent magnitude, 14.66. So I'm gonna copy that into my Excel spreadsheet. And you can see it's already done the calculation where it's got my apparent magnitude and my absolute magnitude to calculate the distance in both parsecs and megaparsecs. So right now I'm going to quickly continue that for all these different other supernova events and you can join me a little bit later on when we have a look at how we analyze this data. Uh, one thing that I will mention before we go is if we look at these supernova events and once again I'll need to put in supernovas type 1a, supernova events type 1a, we want FTS the Fawkes Telescope South, located at Siding Spring Observatory in Coonabarabran. The spectroscope we're selecting there, and go Submit. I should resubmit this form, so I need to turn off Show Aggregator Plots and turn on Show Spectral Plots. And one thing I'm also going to mention is, with this plot here, you can actually detect the elements in this particular star, in this supernova event, by actually overlaying the spectral lines. So you can see that I've just overlaid hydrogen lines. I can't really see any big dips in the, the spectra at the hydrogen lines, but I can turn them off. I might go for something different like iron. And you can see just over there, there's a bit of a dip there. So there might be iron present in this. Um, some spectra will actually be a lot easier to analyze, and you can use the zoom function to actually zoom in um, at that particular point. So if we go up to the top here, we've just completed this supernova event, 2019. That was VSA. We're now going to look at 2019, this one here, VJU. I'm going to copy that once again. 
put that in my Excel file. Then go back to my data here and have a look. That had a redshift value of 0 0.012872. I'm going to copy that, put that in the redshift value. And now I'm going to use my other website. Once again, copying the supernova name. Supernova 2019 VSU. If it doesn't work, the search engine, just press backspace until um, you actually get just that with no spaces there. Click on that supernova event. It's loading up there. Maximize our page so we can see it. Scrolling down. So we've got maximum of our supernova event. It was actually really dim. Our little m maximum was 16.17. So this was a long way away. So I'm going to write 16.17. So little m is apparent magnitude and big M is absolute magnitude. So 16.17. And so you can see there that that was actually uh, nearly double the distance um, than the first one there. So I'll continue doing this. You can join me again once you've filled out a table and we'll go through how to plot your graph.